Now, as the saying goes, it takes a village to raise a child. And in our region, there are agencies such as Lutheran Social Services to help homeless youth and young adults get back on their feet. Here to tell us more about that is Don Shikes, Senior Director of Youth and Family Services at the Center for Changing Lives in Duluth. Welcome. Thanks for being here, Don. Good to have you. How common is it to find young people who are homeless? You know, unfortunately, it's more common than we would like to think. On any given night in Minnesota, you could find 1,300 youth who are experiencing homelessness. And locally, uh, when we've had a point in time count in St. Louis County, we found oh, almost 180 youth were experiencing homelessness. Mm -hmm. Every night? Every night. Wow. When you talk about youth homelessness, what's the definition for that? Is that, is that people who are out on the streets? Is it people who are couch surfing with friends? How, how do you... Uh, Kind of you know, basically, we define youth homelessness as uh -huh. any, any person who is under the age of 24 uh -huh. who doesn't have a stable living situation. So that can include youth who are couch hopping, um, maybe youth who are staying with a friend for a period of time until they're unwelcome and go have to stay with somebody else. It could be somebody who's actually living on the streets, sleeping in the skywalks, um, sleeping mm -hmm. outside, or even in vehicles. So Don, mm -hmm. why are youth homeless? Why do, do they choose to be homeless? What happens? I don't think anybody chooses to be homeless. The reality is that a lot of our youth have experienced significant traumas in their lives, I difficulties see. in family situations, oftentimes generational poverty and abuse and circumstances that have just made it um, you know, Unbearable. unstable or, mm -hmm. or, or unsafe for them to remain in their homes. Mm -hmm. Are there certain populations that seem to be more vulnerable um, that find themselves in this situation more often than others? Yes, definitely. Um, you know, the Wilder Foundation did some research and um, they found that youth who are homeless tend to score higher on what's called the adverse um, childhood experiences scale. Mm -hmm. And that's um, youth who have had at least three instances of things like uh, witnessing abuse in their household. Um, a family member who has untreated mental illness, um, a family member who has been a substance abuse user. Those, those tend to be situations that lead, can lead to homelessness. But we're also seeing a lot of youth from BIPOC populations, um, you know, African American populations, American Indian populations, and the LGBTQ plus communities who are at far higher risk of becoming homeless. and. Um, are overrepresented in the population of homelessness. Mm -hmm. Don, what services are provided at Lutheran Social Services? Well, we have a, a continuum of services um, ranging from prevention services, family services, all the way to intensive services um, for housing for youth. Um, one of our programs that we're really excited about that addresses youth homelessness specifically is our Another Door Emergency Shelter, um, which is a shelter for youth experiencing homelessness between the ages of, of 18 and 24. And as a part of that, they receive case management. We help with um, an actual place for them to stay. And during that time, we're helping them access resources. We're helping with education and housing and employment and really helping them set and attain goals for themselves. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask about education and, and the impact that homelessness can have on the educational track for a person and for their prospects for the future. Speak to that a little bit. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that we are seeing in especially the 18 to 24 population is that um, we, we do have students who are experiencing homelessness that are in high school and you wouldn't necessarily know it. Like Omar said in his video, they work really hard to not have people know that they're homeless. Yeah. And we see that if they can stick with it and stick with the education, um, their likelihood of being able to work through things and find employment and find stable housing significantly increases. Do you work directly or does your organization work directly then with the, the Duluth School District, for instance, to, to get those students who are, who are seniors in high school, maybe 18 years, 17 years old, 
um, get them back into school and get them to graduate? We do. We work very closely with the du Duluth Public Schools and the Families in Transition program that mm -hmm. works with um, homeless students. Some youth who are experiencing homelessness um, are within family systems that are homeless and some youth are unaccompanied. And so we work with the whole gamut of services and types of homelessness to make sure that all of their needs are being met. So Don, how can the greater community play a helpful role? You know, I think it's always important to just be a support in your community and, you know, talk to youth, be involved in, in the extended families that you have, be involved in your neighborhoods and, um, you know, make sure that people's needs are being met. Um, it's great to talk to legislators about the importance of making sure that we have affordable housing in our communities and services for youth to support them. And also, you know, anytime that you can contribute to an organization um, that is supporting youth who are experiencing homelessness, that's great. It can be anything from, you know, donations of socks and um, hygiene supplies to gift cards for grocery stores or places that they can go and purchase clothing mm -hmm. items that they can pick for themselves. Tell us about the Center for Changing Lives. What do you do there? The Center for Changing Lives is um, kind of a one-stop shop that Lutheran Social Services offers programming through. So we offer services ranging from um, supported parenting time where we help families maintain connection with their children while they're working on skills to be reunified with them. We offer a crisis nursery, which um, is uh, you know, a service that will provide diapers and clothing and emergency child care for families. It's totally voluntary and family driven. Um, and we also have housing services for youth. Um, so we have 10 units of um, permanent supportive housing for youth ages 18 to 25. If they are homeless and move into our facility by the time they're 25, they can stay forever. Um, and then we also have some transitional living services, um, another 10 units for youth who are 16 uh, to 21. Um, and both of those types of programs for housing um, focus on case management and independent living skills. We also have some mental health services embedded um, and we have a duly licensed um, therapist um, with chemical health and mental health. Mm -hmm. And then we have all kinds of other things that we do with youth, um, supportive um, groups for the LGBTQ population, uh, which is our Together for Youth group, which we're super excited about. We're going to be doing some fun things for Pride Month here and um, some independent living skills group for youth who are aging out of foster care, but also for youth who haven't been involved in the foster care system, but just really need some support in being able to build their skills. Mm -hmm. When you look at the adult population of, of homeless folks in our community, often mental health and substance use are part of the equation. Do you find that is also often the case with homeless youth, that they're experiencing these challenges as well and need some unique care? They, they definitely are, and that's, that's a part of why we have embedded those services into our homeless youth programming. You know, we see youth who, um, you know, just haven't had access to resources to address, address both mental health, chemical health, and physical <laughs> health needs. And so by being able to provide those skills for them right where they are in that moment, mm -hmm. it really helps them to understand that everyone has mental health and wellness needs. Everyone mm -hmm. has, you know, uh, physical health needs and helping them to be able to access those and, and address those concerns. Don, how can the public get involved? They can check out our website at <laughs> www.lssmn.org. We have all kinds of volunteer opportunities. Um, they can get involved with other local organizations and please you know, share, share your support and um, financial contributions go a long way to helping our homeless youth population. Right. If, there's, if there's one thing, we have about 15 seconds left, one thing that homeless youth need the most, what is it? They really need kindness, support and guidance from a caring, trusted, positive adult in their life. Mm -hmm. All right, Don Shikes, thank you very much. Lutheran Social Services. Thanks, Don. Thank you. Thank you.